good morning students in the second session on phase rule i'll be discussing about application of phase rule to one component system this is an example of one component systems that we have in our in our syllabus are water and sulfur systems so today i'll be discussing about water system in the first session the phase rule we have seen what is phase rule and what are the terms that we come across namely uh, degree of freedom components and phases their definition and also explanation so with the background today we will continue to second session that is application of phase rule to one component systems that is water system and, uh, and we learned that uh, phase rule helps us in predicting the effect of changing temperature pressure or concentration on heterogeneous equilibria and we also learned that gibbs phase rule is flawless and has no limitations and we learned that uh, number of depending upon number of components we have one component or two component systems and today we will be discussing about one component system and this is a phase diagram of water so what is before i discuss about the phase diagram let us see what is a phase diagram so phase diagram is nothing but the graphical representation of a system existing in different phases existing in equilibrium right so phase diagram is nothing but a graphical plot usually it will be pressure versus temperature diagram so phase diagrams are nothing but graphical representation of a system which exists in equilibrium in different phases different phases of the system exist in equilibrium that is thermodynamic equilibrium and this is the phase diagram of water as i said phase diagrams are nothing but plots of pressure versus temperature or pressure versus composition or temperature versus composition and here we are considering pressure versus temperature graph of water system so when you look at the phase diagram of water we have uh, curves three curves and we have three areas and this is a metastable curve i'll explain what is my metastable equilibrium later so phase diagram of any system contains curves areas and a triple points so like here also we have a triple point denoted by o so o a o b o c and o b dash are the curves a o b a o c and b o c are the areas and o is the triple point so in any phase diagram in any typical phase diagram we have to explain the curves areas and the triple points are eutectic points when we come to two component systems so here oa ob oc and ob dash are the curves different curves for water system and we have three areas this is the area where ice exists and this is the area where what water exists in liquid state and this is the area where water exists in vapor state and oa curve is called fusion curve or melting curve because along oa ice is in equilibrium with water along this curve ice is in equilibrium with water so it's called as a fusion curve or melting curve of ice along ob ice is in equilibrium with water vapor solid water is in equilibrium with vapor water therefore this is called as a sublimation curve okay solid solid and vapor are in equilibrium along this curve there is four it's called sublimation curve and along oc liquid water is in equilibrium with vapor water so it's called as a vaporization curve or vapor pressure curve right so oc is a vapor pressure curve or vaporization curve i have written here and ob is a sublimation curve and oa is the fusion curve and along ob dash it is a meta all these are all these curves 
solid lines represent stable equilibria stable equilibrium means equilibrium can be achieved in e from either direction see along this curve uh, we have solid in water in mixture with liquid water so equilibrium between ice and water can be achieved by cooling water or by heating ice so this equilibrium along which solid water and ice uh, liquid water are in equilibrium can be attained either by cooling water or by heating ice so also along this curve you have liquid water in equilibrium with vapor water so this equilibrium where liquid water and vapor water coexist can be attained by heating water liquid water or by cooling water vapor you can achieve this equilibrium from either side so also this along this ov curve you have solid water in equilibrium with vapor water so by cooling water vapor we can achieve this equilibrium or by heating ice i can achieve this equilibrium so these are all stable equilibrium and what is what is ov dash it is called meta stable equilibrium along with super cooled water is in equilibrium with uh, vapor what is super cooled so usually at one atmosphere pressure when you cool water water freezes at 0 degree celsius water at one atmosphere pressure freezes at 0 degree celsius so when you are cooling from room temperature to 0 degree celsius very slowly when the cooling process is very 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 slow we can see that water does not freeze at 0 degree celsius we can cool water without converting it to ice at below 0 degree celsius i can go up to minus 1 or minus 2 degree celsius okay so when water is in liquid state uh, below 0 degree celsius that's called super cooled water so along ov dash super cooled water will be in equilibrium with the uh, water vapor and the super cooled water is a meta stable state just by shaking water super cooled water abruptly changes into ice or just by adding a small piece of ice into super cooled water entire super cooled water changes to ice so that is not stable equilibrium it's a meta stable equilibrium and i said stable equilibrium can be attained from either direction but here ov dash which is a meta stable equilibrium where along which super cooled water and water vapor are in equilibrium right so this super cooled water this equilibrium can be attained only by cooling water below 0 degree celsius i can attain this equilibrium by heating ice because 0 degrees so once we heat ice it melts above 0 degrees celsius so i cannot attain this equilibrium starting from ice i can attain only this equilibrium by cooling carefully water below 0 degrees therefore this is called meta stable equilibrium right so when you look at the phase diagram of water we have three different curves along with one meta stable equilibrium curve then we have three areas and look the sublimation curve of water unlike other systems it is inclined towards pressure axis this is the mystic students usually come they draw a straight line like this for the sublimation uh, this fusion curve or they write inclined towards the right side so sublim uh, this fusion curve of water is slightly inclined towards the left side why this uh, fusion curve is inclined towards left side this indicates that ice has lesser density than water liquid water you all know ice has a lower density than water uh, liquid water so water is denser than ice why in ice there is empty space in ice water molecules are tetrahedral arranged with a large number of empty spaces hence density of ice is less than water in general density of solids is greater than density of liquids but water is an exception 
density of solid water is less than density of liquid water that's why this fusion curve is slightly inclined towards left and also this slight inclination towards left also indicates that with increase in pressure there is a decrease in melting point of course very very small decrease for every one in for every one atmosphere increase in pressure if i increase the pressure of atmosphere pressure from one atmosphere to two atmospheres if i increase pressure of water from one atmosphere to two atmospheres and to two atmospheres pressure water freezes at minus 0 0.007 degrees celsius and at one atmosphere pressure it uh, may, uh, freezes at 0 degrees celsius whereas at two atmospheres water freezes at minus 0 0.0075 degrees celsius in the sense for every one atmosphere increase in pressure freezing point of water decreases by 0 0.0075 degrees celsius which is negligible but still see this is obtained from the experiment so two real two informations that we get from this slight inclination towards the left side is that density of ice is lesser than density of water and freezing point of water decreases slightly upon increasing pressure right okay now so when the question is like discuss phase diagram of water or explain phase diagram of water we have to explain the various curves and re areas and triple point in water of water system right now let us try to explain and let us try to apply phase rule to explain phase diagram of water so now let us consider curve oa which is called fusion curve or melting curve of ice it's called fusion curve or melting curve of ice so along oa what are the uh, phases in equilibrium ice in equilibrium with water solid water in equilibrium with liquid water and the composition of these two phases can be explained with a single component that is h2o therefore it's an example of one component system and when we apply phase rule the number of degrees of freedom along this curve number of degrees of freedom for the system along the curve oa number of components is one along this curve two phases are in equilibrium p is two so this comes to one so along the curve the system is univariant so what is meant by the system along the curve oa is univariant suppose i want to define the state of the system at this point say x i want to define the system or the equilibrium i want to define the equilibrium state at a point x along the curve ox so at point x there is only one value of pressure and only one value of temperature there's at this point x it is one of the points along at the equilibrium along oa curve so if i want to define the state of equilibrium or state of this system at point x i can simply specify either pressure or temperature because for a given pressure at point x there is a definite temperature or if i consider another point y along the curve oa at this point there is a definite temperature and there is a definite pressure so either by specifying the temperature or pressure at point x i am able to define the state of the system completely so along the curve oa the system is univariant i think it should be clear so number of degree of freedom for the system along the curve oa is one it's univariant and along this system along this curve ice that is solid water is in equilibrium with liquid water so these are the two phases in equilibrium and remember along the curve always there will be two phases in equilibrium and system will be univariant if you understand this it will it will be very very easy to explain other curves also so that's oa curve then curve ob 
along the curve OB. What is curve OB? Ice. Solid water is in equilibrium with vapor water. So, solid and liquid are in equilibrium. So, solid and vapor are in equilibrium. So, this is called as sublimation curve. The solid and vapor. What is meant by sublimation? Conversion of a solid directly into gaseous state without changing into liquid state. Right. Okay. So, this is sublimation curve. Along this curve, solid water, that is ice, is in equilibrium with the vapor water. So, it is again one component system. Phases are two. So, when we apply phase rule, the number of degree of freedom along the curve OB for the system is one. Therefore, it's again, the system is univariant along the curve OB. Similarly, if we consider OC, along OC, water in liquid state is in equilibrium with the water vapor. So, liquid water and vapor water are in equilibrium along the curve OC. Look, the curve OC is stopped here. I will explain why. Curve OC or this vaporization curve or vapor pressure curve is not extended beyond this. And at point, it stops at point C. At point C, the pressure is 218 atmospheres and temperature is 373 degrees Celsius. So, this is called critical pressure of water and this is called critical temperature of water. We have learnt in a uh, gaseous state, the gases are critical constraints. So, critical temperature is the temperature above which a gas cannot be liquefied, however high the pressure may be. So, gases can be liquefied by increasing the pressure or decreasing the temperature. Okay. But for a very gas or vapor, there is certain temperature above which it cannot be liquefied. So, above 373 degrees Celsius and 218 atmospheres, water can never exist in liquid state. It only exists in vapor state. That's the reason why above the, here also we have water in vapor state, here also we have water in vapor state. So, you should be very careful. It, it stops at C, point C. Curve OC stops at point C where the pressure is 218 atmospheres and temperature is 373 Kelvin which are critical pressure and critical temperature of water. Right. So, along the curve OC, liquid water is in equilibrium with vapor water. Again, number of phases is 2, number of components is 1, so it is a univariant system, right? So, along the curve, always remember, the system, the degree of freedom is 1 and system will be univari univariant along the curve. And what is OB dash? It is metastable equilibrium curve. It is metastable, not stable equilibrium. Metastable equilibrium curve, along which water, super cooled water, Super cooled water are in equilibrium with the water vapor. Again, there are two phases. Super cooled water means water cooled water which is in liquid state below 0 degree Celsius at 1 atmosphere pressure. This is super cooled water. And it's highly unstable state. Just by shaking, super cooled water abruptly changes into it. Or just by adding a small piece of ice, super cooled water entirely changes into ice. That's why it's called metastable state. Right. So again, uh, this is a metastable curve uh, and uh, the system is uh, monovariant along uh, the curves. Okay. So, we have discussed about four curves. Now, we will discuss about triple point. Then, I will discuss about areas. Triple point. So, what is a tri triple point? Oh, triple. Look here, triple point. It is the point at which all the three states of uh, water coexist in equilibrium. Liquid water, liquid water, solid water, vapor water, they are existing in equilibrium. Look at this point. Look at this point. Water, liquid water, solid water, vapor water, all are in equilibrium. And uh, F is equal to C minus P plus 2. So, the degree of freedom at point O 
is equal to what number of components it's a one component system c is one number of phases that are existing at equilibrium is three and uh, so so degree of freedom at triple point o for water system is a zero means it is a non-variant system you need not specify either temperature or pressure as i said in the first session on phase row so this three states of water exist in equilibrium only at a pressure of 4.58 millimeters and 0 0.0075 degrees celsius look the scale of a pressure scale is not accurate approximately i have taken okay this is temperature axis this is pressure axis and here i have shown 3 centigrade degrees celsius and here i am showing this as 0 0.0075 so it's not up to the scale please uh, don't worry about the scale we only remember that at O pressure is 4.58 millimeters of mercury temperature is 0 0.0075 degrees celsius only at this temperature and at this pressure three states of water or three phases of water coexist now if you just change either pressure or temperature one of the two phases will vanish and only two phases will exist in equilibrium so that's why the system is invariant or non-variant at o so let me tell you why is that temperature and pressure are fixed now if i increase the temperature from 0 0 75 degrees celsius now if i increase the temperature what happens sir? till 0 degree celsius ice will be there once the temperature increases to more than 0 degree celsius ice completely melts so solid phase uh, disappears you have liquid phase and vapor phase so when you increase the temperature keeping the pressure constant what happens uh, solid phase of water that is ice phase disappears and you have only liquid vapor liquid phase and water phase which coexist so what happens when you keeping the pressure constant to increase the temperature the curve moves like this as long as you are heating whatever heat you supply it is converted it is utilized in converting ice to water once all your ice and wall ice melts what happens the curve moves like this you are increasing the temperature so the curve moves like this keep the temperature constant and increase the pressure keep the temperature constant and increase the pressure at constant temperature and increase the pressure what happens sir water vapor starts decreasing its volume so it goes on getting converted to liquid water so as we increase the pressure keeping the temperature constant vapor water is converted to liquid water as long as vapor water is present increase in pressure does not affect the chi state of equilibrium you are keeping the temperature constant and you are increasing the pressure so this increase in pressure is resulting in converting vapor water to liquid water so as long as vapor water is present it is converted to liquid once all your vapor disappears you have only solid water and liquid water now the curve moves along this curve because you have only solid and liquid so that's the reason why i said if you change either pressure or temperature one of the phases disappears one of the phase from 0, 0, 0.075 degrees celsius if you change it to 0, 0, 0.078 degrees ice disappears uh, okay ice disappears only there will be two phases even for four, from 4.58 millimeters if you change it to 5 millimeters of pressure Vapor, pressure, uh, vapor, uh, vapor phase disappears and you have only liquid water and solid water. So that's how triple point O is a non-variant system or the system at O is an invariant or non-variant system. So if I simply say what is it in, in triple point state, it goes without saying that water is at a pressure of 4.58 millimeters of mercury and at a temperature of 0 0.0075 degrees Celsius. That's all. So, if we simply say water is existing in its triple point, 
That's all. So, nothing to mention. There is no need to mention any pressure or temperature as long as we are speaking about triple point. Okay. So, we discussed about uh, the curves and triple point. Now, let us discuss about the areas. So, consider area AOB. So, what is present in this area? Only ice. Single phase. Nothing is present. Your entire water is present in a solid state. So, under the curve AOB, this is the curve. Under the curve AOB, ice exists. Water is present in solid state. So, when we apply phase root to the area, to the system in the area AOB, you can see C minus P plus 2. This is a one component system. C is 1. And the number of phases here is only one phase. Nothing is in equilibrium. Entire water is in solid state. So number of phases is one. So degree of freedom comes to be two. It's bivariant. Means what? I have to mention both the pressure and temperature. Why? Let us see. Suppose I want. I have. A, I want to define the system state of the system at point x in the area OB. I want to define the state of water system at point x in the area OB. If I simply measure, say state temperature, there are so many states of uh, water which have got same temperature. See, this is constant temperature system at, along this curve. There are various systems along at this temperature which are present. So, which state of system I am speaking about? If I simply mention the temperature, there are so many systems existing at this temperature. Or if I simply say pressure, if I simply mention the pressure of uh, system at X, there are so many systems having same pressure. All the systems along this line have same pressure. So, I am unable to define the state of system completely at the X just by stating temperature or by stating pressure because for a given temperature there are so many pressure values so different systems are there and for a given pressure there are so many temperatures and so many systems having same pressure but my point is to define the system at x so if i want to define the state of water system at x i have to say or specify both pressure and temperature. Then only I am specifically speaking about system at x. So system in the areas is always a bivariant system. Remember along the curves the system is univariant. In the areas the system is bivariant. At a triple point it is invariant. So the same thing applies to any area. If you consider area AOC so in the area under the curve AOC, water exists in liquid state. There is only one phase. In the area under the curve AOC, there is only one phase. What is that phase? Liquid water phase. So when you apply phase rule, the system turns out to be bivariant in the area AOC. And we have seen already what is meant by bivariant system. So if I want to specify the state of a system point Y in the area A O C, I have to specify both the pressure and temperature. Okay, that's why in order to define the state of the system completely at point Y, it's necessary to specify pressure as well as temperature. Then let us consider the area under the curve B O C. Area under the curve B O C. This area. Water is present in vapor state. There is only one phase for water in the area B O C. This is the area. Under this area. In this, in this area, water is present in vapor state. So when you apply the phase roll, then number of degree of freedom comes out to be 2. The system is a bivariant. So to define the state of a system 
to specify the state of a system anywhere in this area it is necessary to specify both pressure and temperature so like that the system in areas in any area the system is bivariant and along the curve the system is univariant you take any curve along the curves the system is univariant or monovariant and a triple point the system is invariant or non-variant. So this is how we can explain a phase diagram of water. So with this, we complete discussion on phase diagram of water. In the next session, I will be, be, be discussing about sulfur system. Thank you.